he was like, well, you know, people that leave our church, this is one thing they really miss. Okay. So, <laughs> and he was quite, kind of felt kind of serious about it, you know, so um, that kind of, that kind of made an impression on me. So people often wonder if it's possible to attend an Amish church service. And the answer to that is yes. Now you would need to get an invitation to be able to do that. I've attended Amish church services around a dozen times uh, in different communities in different states. I uh, usually have been invited by friends to do that. It is a different experience from what you'll find at most other Christian church services. So I want to run through five things that you're likely to see at an Amish church service. Before we get to that, I want to quickly run through some basics on Amish church. Some of the things that make it a little different from other churches. Amish hold church not every Sunday, but once every two weeks. That's something a little different from most Christian denominations. The basic unit of Amish society is the church district or the congregation. Now that consists of the kind of the local families in the geographic area. And that's typically anywhere from about 20 to about 40 families. Usually right in the middle there, 25, 30, 35 families. If it's a very young or new settlement, there may just be a handful of families. So it's usually in the ballpark of like 100 to 150 people in a church. So the idea there is it's pretty small, and the Amish like to keep it small. They feel that reflects kind of what the early church was like. So you kind of know everybody in the church uh, district, uh, at least fairly well. So church is held in the home or in a building or structure at a member's home. So that may be in the basement or in a large room of the home, or that may be in a workshop uh, could be even in a barn. It reflects the idea that the church is the, is the people, is the community, rather than the building. So the Amish, for the most part, do not build church buildings. There are a few exceptions to that. In the book, A Thousand and One Questions and Answers on the Christian Life, which is an important book for the Amish, the authors observe that in the Bible, church always refers to people, not a building. When you have church at home, that means a lot of preparation for the host family. There's a lot of cleaning. There's a lot of prep work. Uh, you have the church benches that come, and they're actually brought from you know home to home by a big church wagon. You have to unload those. I've actually helped to do this before. You unload them, and you have to get them into the space. We've put them in through the, the basement window to get them down into the basement, some of them quite long. So there's a lot of stuff that's done to prep for the service because you're going to have you know 30 families to your home. So the service consists of some opening singing, uh, preaching, prayer. Uh, there's something called zuganus, which is a testimony. And then sometimes there's a members meeting where only members are present, where they'll may discuss some, some church matters there, uh, where if you're a non-member, you may have to leave at that point. And then there will be the fellowship meal after church concludes. So th that's the brief intro. Uh, if you'd like to know more on Amish Church, I've got a lot of uh, articles on the website about that at AmishAmerica.com. Five things you are likely to see at an Amish church service. Number one, children eating a snack. Now, that does not sound like something strange. I get it. But the reason I put that on there is to really to make the point that Amish church services are three hours long, typically. Okay, so it's a very long service. So you're likely to have the little children occupied by something like a snack or something, maybe a little toy. So it's, you know, it's hard for them to sit still for such a long time, but usually they're pretty quiet and well-behaved. That's one thing you can usually say about Amish children uh, in general. They're pretty well-behaved when they're supposed to be. I'm not saying they're perfect angels, but, you know, the Amish do discipline their children. And, you know, you can kind of see the results when you're around an Amish family. So that's a really light point, but the main point here is that the church service itself is three hours long. Most people are sitting on these long church benches. There are a few seats with backs that are usually reserved for the ministers and the older people in the uh, congregation, and those are kind of placed towards the front. I think I was privileged to sit in one of those uh, once or twice. So when, when church was at one of my friend's places, he got me in that seat. I guess he had the, the VIP access <laughs> for me, so... Uh, and that, that kind of makes a difference. The benches that may be in the back of the uh, structure that you're in, like let's say it's a basement, the ones on the back wall are also kind of nice because you have a, you know, you have something to lean against. It's a long service. Now, some Amish, the plainest Amish, will even have a service longer than that. It could be four hours. So they may only have it every other week, but when they do have it, they're there for quite a while. Number two, 
an hour-long sermon. So there are actually two sermons or two, you know, two times of preaching that happen in the Amish church. There's a first shorter one, and then there's the longer one. The sermon itself can be as long as some other church's entire service. The preacher will stand up. He'll be the only one standing, uh, speaking in front of the of the congregation. And again, by the way, this is all in Pennsylvania Dutch or Pennsylvania German. Same same language, different name. So as an outsider, if you attend, you're not going to uh, understand a lot of uh, what's going on. Occasionally you will, you know, if there's a reference to a biblical name that is, you know, the same, you know, you'll, you'll catch that. Uh, sometimes I've noticed Amish preachers will drop in some English expressions or sayings, but I've never, you know, I've never attended Amish service where it's, you know, more than, you know, one, one percent or half percent or less than a half percent of actual English or recognizable English words that I could understand spoken. So what do they preach about? So they have a lectionary which guides them. They use that kind of scripture reading from the lectionary as kind of a starting point often, right? So at, from their lectionary calendar. And so examples of that would be Matthew 8 through 9, Matthew 4 through 5. John 17, Ephesians 4, Romans 12. They often incorporate the Psalms and the Old Testament and even examples from daily life. So Amish preachers, ministers, preachers, they're kind of called by both uh, names. Amish preachers can be quite engaging for the congregation uh, or not so much. And different you know, preachers have reputations as well. You know, you'll hear Amish people comment that they enjoy the preaching of, you know, this or that preacher. In the book, The Amish Way, this is a book about Amish religion and spirituality. It's noted that most sermons are patterned on a style of preaching that they have heard since they were children. And I've noticed this, that you hear kind of the same or similar cadences as you listen to the preacher go, right? And so, you know, I not being able to really understand much of what's being said, uh, that's kind of the thing that you notice as a, you know, as a non-Pennsylvania Dutch speaker. So there can be kind of a rhythm and flow and even like a sing-song sort of uh, rhythm to the actual preaching. Sometimes it can seem that the preacher gets a little emotional even. You can hear his voice kind of waver, okay? So uh, I wish I could give more details about what's being said at that moment, but as an English guy, I can't do that. <laughs> so, and by the way, Amish ministers, preachers, or the bishop, you know, they're not they don't seek this job. They don't campaign for it. They don't go to school for it. There's no, you know, divinity school for Amish preachers. So it, there's a process of how they're chosen. It's actually a combination of uh, voting by both male and female members of the congregation. And then uh, there's a random element, or some might say that's where the, uh, you know, the will of God in, engages the, the process, okay, where they actually select a book which has a certain passage of scripture written on it and uh, each person chooses one of the books and they you know the one that chooses the book with the scripture passage in it is the one who's chosen to be the minister they consider that a quite a heavy burden so you know when that happens people will be definitely praying for that man and for his wife and his or his family okay only men are chosen for the ministry in the Amish church if you attend a church service, the preacher you hear preaching may not actually be the preacher from that district. Uh, it may be a visiting preacher, which is fairly common, where you have a visitor from another, uh, you know, nearby, could be nearby church, could be someone visiting from another community or a state even, who is asked to preach. So number three, someone sleeping. So you can see why I included this point after the point about long sermons and the length of the church service. Now, before I get any critique on this point, I'm not here to suggest that Amish people are just snoozing through church. But if you think about it, a three-hour church service is a long time to sit still. You may notice this visually, or you may hear some snores or something, or you know, you may hear the breathing change that indicates someone's asleep. It can happen. You know, it could be youth that were out late the night before. It could be one of the guys on the back benches with his, you know, with the wall to lean up against. That's certainly a lot easier to drift off. Could be someone who had a big breakfast and now they've sat down and it's, you know, 930 and there's two and a half hours of service to go and they're getting drowsy. Uh, this even happened to me one time. Uh, there's, there's a portion of the service where you kneel down with your, basically your face down on the bench that you've just been sitting on. Everyone kneels down and you do that for a certain amount of time. 
and then you know then you get up again and uh I was uh, kneeling down like that, and I just had kind of drifted off in that time that I was there in the minute or two that, you know, I had my head down. Uh, I was pretty tired, and I, I got up in time, but there was definitely a delay on my, uh, you know, on my standing up. I think I may have heard, you know, everyone else kind of jostling to stand up around me, and that kind of startled me awake from my, you know, light snooze that I had fallen into. So I can speak from experience in my, you know, relatively limited experience. Also, especially if the preacher is maybe not the most engaging of a speaker. And that can, you know, people get sleepy. I mean, there's 150 people in there. I've read about this issue in Amish publications before, that it's something that the Amish have commented on. And of course, uh, you know, again, that's not to suggest this is like everybody <laughs> just goes to church and knocks off. Uh, it's just kind of making the point that, you know, the Amish, the Amish are human too. So uh, that can happen. I'd be surprised if it didn't happen. So that's a reason it may be a good idea to fast or have a light breakfast only before an Amish church service. By the way, if you're liking this video, do me a favor, give it a quick like. I appreciate it. Number four, the holy kiss. So Amish ministers will greet one another before the service with the holy kiss. And just like the name sounds, this is a kiss. This is a kiss on the lips. And that's as ordained in numerous books of the Bible, including Romans, 1 Thessalonians, and others. In some churches, like in the New Order, all members will exchange the kiss. That'll be, of course, males and males, females and females. It's also given to newly baptized members of the church following the baptism ceremony. It's usually just a quick peck. So when you get to an Amish church service, the people, the men, you know, I'm speaking from a male perspective, but the men who are already there are usually standing around kind of in a semicircle, usually in the barn or out near the barn, kind of outside uh, the home there. And you go around and you basically shake everyone's hand and greet everyone. And that's actually when you'll see the holy kiss given. I mean, all the women go into the house. Now, you know, visitors don't get, don't get the holy kiss. If you don't know this is coming and you don't know what the holy kiss is, it may very well surprise you. Uh, I think it surprised me the first time I saw it because I wasn't aware of that practice at the time. So one, one doctrinal pamphlet that the Amish uh, have explains it. It's called The Truth and Word and Work. This is actually a pamphlet from the New Order Amish. And it says that it is a token of love and fellowship with one another and with the Lord. It is to be practiced regularly by all Christians as they meet in fellowship together as a brotherhood. So you've got that explanation. You've also got, of course, more importantly, a scriptural basis that the Amish base that practice upon. Number five, Amish peanut butter. So this technically isn't a part of the church service, but of the fellowship meal that follows every Amish church service. All Amish do this after church. They basically gather together for a simple meal. Uh, the men sit on kind of one table or the, their own tables, and the women sit on their own tables. The tables themselves are actually made from the church benches. So you kind of combine two of the church benches, and then there's like a couple of wooden sort of... Uh, uh, add-ons that you pop it up and it actually makes a table, right? So it's very, very practical. So these are simple foods. There is typically there's some breads, there's a cheese spread called schmierkäse, there are pickled beets, uh, could be some cold cuts or pretzels. I've had a hot noodle soup served before. Some of the plainer churches like the Source and Trooper Amish are known to serve a bean soup. Black coffee is served. Amish typically drink the coffee black uh, and also water and also Amish peanut butter. So it's different from regular peanut butter. It's a combination of peanut butter and then also like marshmallow molasses and it kind of has a very uh, runny uh, consistency. So it's not that kind of thick spreadable kind and it's quite sweet. And so I usually like to take a slice of bread and I put the schmear case of spread cheese on one half and then the uh, Amish peanut butter on the other half, the dessert on this meal is typically pie. Like in Lancaster County, they typically have a pie called Snitz pie, which is a dried apple pie and uh, delicious pie. That's uh, actually, I included that, I think, on my list of five favorite Amish foods in that video. But there can be other types of pies. Uh, I've even had like cookies and I think dessert bars uh, at least once that was in Ohio. So this meal is quite a modest meal, but it's quite tasty, especially after a three hour church service. And there will typically be uh, more than one seating. You have a relatively quick time to eat the meal. Everybody kind of packs in, you eat it, you talk with everyone, and uh, it's a nice time together. 
and then uh, you know after you finish you you know you say a, a there's a silent prayer in closing and then the next uh, group is seated and some of the women will go around and they will refill like your water and coffee and so forth. So the things that are served at the meal can vary some, but uh, you know you typically have this Amish peanut butter. It actually started getting commercially manufactured and sold, so you can buy an Amish peanut butter spread in a lot of the kind of Amish style or Pennsylvania Dutch stores like in, in Amish communities. There's a number of uh, makers that, that sell, sell it. I remember a, an Amish man that I met, I think it was in maybe in Indiana or Illinois, I think he had some of the peanut butter there actually at the home. They had maybe just had church service and had some left over. And I, th I think they gave me some to sample. And he was, he would just told me kind of, he's like, he was like, well, you know, people that leave our church, this is one thing they really miss. Okay. So, <laughs> and he was quite, kind of felt kind of serious about it, you know, so um, that kind of, that kind of made an impression on me. So that's the fellowship meal. That's kind of the ending of the uh, Amish church uh, service uh, experience, let's say. And then after that, you know, you usually spend time talking and people kind of gradually uh, start leaving and drift off, you know, to wherever they're going to go. Some go visiting, which is very popular for the Amish. Some youth may be going somewhere later that evening and they need to get home and kind of get ready to go because it may be, you know, far, farther away to, you know, so to a youth group. So uh, that's kind of how, how it wraps up. By the way, my name is Eric Westner. I run the Amish America website at AmishAmerica.com. I make two videos per week. Hit the subscribe button so you can stay in the loop for future videos. Thanks. See you next time.